Hello. Stravstvotchi. Привет. How are you? Good, I hope. I'm in the void currently, but there are videos to make. Videos specifically on the ridiculous amount of AKs, or these here Soviet boys that are in Phantom Forces, which is exactly what we're here to do today. I'm gonna put these in order from worst to best, strictly based on stock performance. So, none of that, well, if you use this setup, yeah. It'll be a difficult task. Some people may have their feelings hurt, some people may want to hurt mine, or me. But at the end of the day, we're all wrong, because the only good gun in Phantom Forces is clearly the Boxy Buster. Come join me on this journey, and try to continue your screams until the end of the video. Also, subscribe if you end up enjoying the video, which you will. These are gonna be my own opinions, by the way, so keep that in mind, please. Thanks. All right, well, we're off to a scary start here. Let me say that none of the AKs are bad. They're all pretty decent, but I feel the AK-47, just the standard thing when you think of AK, is uh, less than favorable. On the surface, just looking at a glance, the base stats are fine. Okay, fire rate, damage kind of high, etc., etc. but stock recoil is just really bad. There's no debating that. I thought even though the recoil was high, the slow fire rate would put the muzzle back where it started. You know, like it totally could, but no, it just, it, it keeps going up. You could still have put some good damage close up though, but it's one of those guns where you really need to put attachments on. No, I don't want to know your AK-47 setup. Now, okay, I'm a man who loves a good RPK. You give me an AK that's upscaled with a magazine that takes 127 minutes to load, and I'm a happy guy. But sometimes it doesn't slap hard enough. This, for me, is one of those times. Now, I like the RPK-12 a good bit, and it's the only LMG with three different firing modes, and of course the only one with a thousand RPM hyperburst, which is stupid overpowered, but I just feel that it doesn't know what it wants to be, and it leads it to be just kind of very weird and awkward. It has recoil similar to an assault rifle, it's slow like an LMG, but has a wacky, goofy fire mode. Honestly, yes, it just plays like an upscaled AK-12, which we'll get to later, so stick around for that, but this one just feels boring, maybe? Not the best word to use. I could feel you seething, but I, I don't know. And honestly, for rank 37, it's pretty decent, I'd say. I'm a bit more iffy on the AK-105, though. Damage is solid, its unlock rank is eh. Stock recoil is pretty good, but the rate of fire is slow for a carbine. Like, overall, it's alright. I mean, it's not bad or anything, it's just very middle of the road, but not in a great way. Like, if you've got it, give it a try. But if not, uh, maybe wait till you unlock it. I don't know, not much to say, though. It's okay. Though I may have a similar mindset of the AK-105 here, where it's alright, we're in some more wacky, kooky, crazy territory with the AK-12C, because now we're getting crazy with a 1000 RPM hyperburst mode, just like the RPK-12, with the handling of a carbine, close-up damage of an SMG, and it just kind of makes every time melting time. This can be a lot of fun to use, but its recoil can be pretty heavy too, especially with the burst mode, making it sometimes even difficult to shred close up, but when you do, it's party time. Now, before we get into a really weird and gross AK, I just need to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, me. I make these videos pretty frequently for lovely viewers like you, and on the very likely chance that you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to subscribe with notifications on. I've got some other great content coming up soon that you're not going to want to miss, and if you want to, become a channel member as well. It's a dollar a month, and you'll be supporting the channel a ton. Thanks. Yes, I'm as surprised as you are that the Type 88 isn't at the very bottom of the list because, let's be real, it usually is the last thing a person of sound mental healthiness may choose. But I am not a man of sound mind. If you haven't used it before, the Type 88 is an AK that's unwieldy, it takes a while to reload, it's slow, it's clunky, but it has a huge, wacky bison-style drum under it that holds a nice 75 rounds of the latest and greatest 545 the North Koreans have to offer. Honestly, while it has a 3-shot close-up potential and pretty far damage range, I'd honestly honestly say that this is something that's a bit more to be used like an LMG, stationary and at a bit of a distance, because frankly it's a little bit too slow overall to use as a run and gun type of setup, but I'm sure that some Type 88 man out there will be sure to tell me his life story of how the Type 88 saved his KD ratio, no doubt. Plus, it's unlocked at rank 122, so um, that's something. On the topic of things that play like LMGs, here's an LMG. Crazy, right? The RPK-74. It has a lot of things that I like about AKs. The look of an AK, it's it's a big AK, and uh, that's about it. But it's got a little bit more to itself than just that. It's got an alright fire rate at 650, it's a little slower handling overall than some of the other options on the list here thus far, but it's fairly consistent with decent mid-range damage drop-off. And though it's nothing too out of this world, honestly, it's just not bad for a stock LMG, let alone one of the many AKs in the game. 
However, if you think the RPK-74 is nice, but just a little bit too slow, how about you shrink it down and use the AK-74? It's everything the RPK-74 is, but a little bit faster handling at the cost of a little bit less of everything overall. Slightly less close-up damage, though still three-shot, less magazine capacity, less muzzle velocity, and yeah, it, it's basically just the same thing, and it's just kind of the downgrades that you'd expect for a smaller version of something. It's pretty much the same thing, though. To scale things a little bit back up again, the RPK. Take the last two guns, scale them up in every aspect, reduce their fire rate, add the sound effect of a large metal sheet bouncing around in a washing machine, and bam, RPK. Damage is one of my favorite things about this being high for all ranges. It has close to 100 stud damage drop off, and it's got alright stock recoil. You know, if you've never seen recoil before. Honestly, if anything, this is just really fun to use, and I know that not everybody will agree, but I've yet to really have a genuinely bad time whenever I equip this. At least when I'm not dying every two and a half seconds. Now, being the AK guy that I am, a flat standard AKM is a nice thing to see in Phantom Forces, and it's a nice thing to use generally. On the surface, you'll see that, whoa, it has less damage than the AK-47, but it's a much higher level unlock, and it's higher on this list? Well, there's two reasons for that. One, though I like AK derivatives like the AK-100 series, there's nothing quite like some nice wooden furniture. But two, it's recoil. Yes, again, judging these on stock performance alone, the recoil is just a decent amount lower. Not perfect, not the best, but lower. Not to mention, the damage difference is small enough and the overall damage is high enough to where the 0.1 second time to kill is completely unaffected by the difference, all the while having the same basic overall stats. So honestly, it's overall just a direct upgrade in general performance over the AK-47. Now the AK-103 is seemingly in the exact same situation, where it's giving you generally lower recoil over the other AKs, in this case the AKM, for slightly less damage. Still the same time to kill, still the same fire rate, same magazine capacity, muzzle velocity, and all the other epic whatevers, but just for a little bit less general recoil and a little bit less general damage. Though higher long range damage range, I guess, which is nice. It's basically the same spot as the AKM. It's honestly just a preference at that point, there's very little difference that I could feel during gameplay, minus a few times where I could have really, really used those little extra bits of damage, but they're basically in the same spot. The AK-12BR I actually kind of forgot about for a while until I was making this video. It's kind of cool though, you've got crazy high base damage, again with a thousand RPM burst mode, though this one's two shot burst instead of three. The sound effect for it sounds really uh, beefy, I don't know how else to describe it. Recoil super high though, understandably so, and it's a battle rifle so it's got a smaller magazine. But honestly, I'd go as far as to say that this is kind of broken even though it has the higher recoil. It is a melting machine. It's only a rank 44 unlock too, not bad. A more of a recent addition, or rather less old, is the AKS-74U, or AKS, or AK-74U, call it whatever you like. It's basically a tiny AK. While it doesn't have a crazy high fire rate like some of the other AKs on the list, it's still in that same higher range with almost 750 RPM, meanwhile retaining some lower recoil. 37 up close damage is also in the higher range, especially for its size, and for its general speed, but alongside that high damage is a really fast reload at 2.1 seconds and 2.7 on a completely empty magazine. Plus, honestly, just look at it. It, it. It's sick, dude. I'll admit it, I've been a hater. I've been pretty judgmental. Perhaps even a little base. I always thought the Bison was, frankly, garbage, but I could never quite wrap my head around why every single time somebody is using it, they would shred the entire server, specifically me for some reason. But recently, I've gone out of my comfort zone of zero recoil ARs, and I've been trying new guns that I really don't use. The MP5K and Bison videos are good examples. Go check those out. Go check those out if you want to. But this is no different. It's kind of... It's kind of unironically cracked. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe I said that either. Reasonable damage with three shot ability up to 50 studs, a torso multiplier somehow, but those are like relatively normal things for the SMG category. However, the 53 round magazine, yes, combined with its eh, average fire rate, allows it to sustain itself for strings of kills without having to reload like you would with basically any other SMG. So it's really good for up close maps if you can aim pretty well. Seal of approval from me, perhaps I treated you too harshly. And yes, it's basically a tiny AK, it has 60% parts compatibility, so it's more AK than not, so be quiet. A personal former favorite of mine is the AKU-12. It was actually a gun that I made one of my first Phantom Forces videos on, and while I may not use it as much as I used to, it's been really fun picking it back up again. It fires closing in on a thousand RPM, with really good close-up damage, all the while having basically zero recoil. Just out of the box. Nothing on it. And all of that for only being unlocked at rank 35. Kinda bonkers. Maybe even quite whimsical. 
realistically, I think that people are going to be a little bit confused why I put the AK-12, a stock level zero unlock, and the first thing you see whenever you load up Phantom Forces for the very first time, this high on the tier list of all the AKs. But let me tell you, it's good for even being level 216. It's got basically average damage for the assault rifle category, average fire rate, magazine capacity, recoil, damage drop off, muzzle velocity, which is the speed of the bullet right out of the barrel, but it's got this silly goofy 1000 RPM burst mode that the RPK-12 and AK-12C both have as well. So why am I putting it so high though if it's just basically average? Because it's a stock unlock. That's exactly why I think it's so good. Completely middle of the road, nothing super crazy that most people would sweat their absolute faces off with, but not useless trash given to you at the start where you feel pressure to spend Robux or credits on buying higher level guns. The burst mode is a nice bonus for sure, but honestly, completely stock. It's totally fine no matter how high of a level you are. It's completely usable. It's literally just one of your best options if you're a casual player who likes AKs but maybe isn't a super high level, or if you're a super high level who's just kind of bored of higher level guns. I mean, that's that's basically it. That's basically where we're at. That's the list from worst to best, in my opinion, of all the AKs and Phantom Forces. Don't like it or want to say, bruh, no way he said this better than that. Feel free to yell and scream in the comments, or you can make a constructive argument like a normal functioning member of the society that we've gotten ourselves into. I've said before that there are really no horrible guns in Phantom Forces, though some things are basically the same. Everyone's going to like something different, and that's one of the many things that I like about playing this game specifically. Also, I know somebody is going to yell that the SVDS is basically an AK because it has a similar field strip and profile, but it's completely different. If you do want to know where that would fit on a tier list though, feel free to check out my sniper tier list on the screen right now and subscribe if you're new so that way you can see more awesome content like this as it comes out. It's all free, so if you made it this far, it's clearly something that you want to do. Thanks for watching. Also, yes, uh, the Groses are technically bullpup AKs, uh, literally, but <sighs> another day. And no, the AN94 is not an AK. Me win London! Me, oh no, me when America. Me when America. <laughs>